preaching through the book of Acts on Sunday mornings, and uh, we found ourselves this past Sunday morning in Acts chapter 22, and uh, as we brought the message on the testimony of the Apostle Paul, and three times in the Word of God, we find, well, the first time is in the book of Acts chapter 9, and Luke is the writer of the book of Acts, and he uh, gives us and relates to us the conversion of Saul of Tarsus. And then two other times, in Acts 22 and Acts 26, Paul also uh, reminisces and reflects on his testimony as he shares it again. So we see a recording of Paul's testimony three times in the Word of God. And Acts chapter 22, I preached on that, verses 1 through 7. Uh, I'm sorry, verses 1 through through, um, 10 this past Sunday morning. And uh, there's an interesting verse in verse number 28 I'd like to read tonight for this special occasion. We're normally teaching through on the subject of prophecy on Wednesday nights. I want to take a little detour from that tonight because of July the 4th. And we'll take back up on our prophecy series next Wednesday. And so please be uh, have that in mind. Acts chapter 22 and verse 28, uh, the Bible says, And the chief captain answered with a great sum obtained, With a great sum obtained I this freedom. And Paul said, but I was freeborn. I was freeborn. Interesting. The Bible talks about (coughs) the chief captain through a great sum of money purchasing freedom. And Paul talks about being freeborn. Being freeborn. And... uh, The Bible tells us in the book of Galatians, if you'll look in chapter 5, the Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And uh, so the Bible here tells us about the freedoms that we have in Christ, being freely born of the grace of God, and standing in the freedom of God and the liberty that we have as a Christian. Of course, tomorrow we celebrate the birth of our nation. In 1776, 56 brave men signed the document known as the Declaration of Independence. Last year, I was looking through some notes, and I preached on, uh, I preached on a Declaration of Dependence last year on this, this special occasion and how all of us should be dependent upon the Lord. Uh, as Christians, but I'm thankful tonight that I live in a free nation, a free country. I was sharing yesterday in the nursing home service with the older generation. Some are part of that great generation that are still living and uh, that understand the freedoms that we have that so many take for granted. And um, I'm thankful that we have the freedom to assemble as we're assembling here tonight. We have the freedom to worship, the freedom to pray, the freedom to take our Bible and open it in a service like this and to to read and preach and teach the Word of God. These are freedoms that other nations do not enjoy or partake in. In some places, to have a service like this, it has to be in private, underground. Uh, um, And if it is made public, there's the possibility of being arrested and persecuted, imprisoned, and even tortured or even martyred for the cause of Christ. But not in our country because we have the freedoms uh, of, I'm talking about, uh, of liberty and freedom that we have uh, in this nation. But we also understand not only uh, these kind of freedoms, but we also understand spiritual freedom. We understand spiritual and religious freedom, spiritual freedom, to be set free, to be born into the family of God, to be born free and uh, to experience a new birth in Christ and to have the freedom that comes along with that new birth. And that's what I want to talk to you tonight about that subject. Freedom is something that most of the world only dreams of. But sadly, in our nation, we've taken our great freedoms for granted The freedom that we have can be lost and lost very quickly. Uh, It didn't take but one generation to lose the freedoms 
that we have fought for uh, for over 200 years. And so God's word says something about the nation that forgets God. I remind you in Psalms 9 in verse 17, the Bible says, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. It's, that's a dangerous time in our nation when we are putting God out of so many things. And the great generation that I spoke of a moment ago understood the cost of freedom. And uh, I'm glad today that these sacrifices have been made. So I have some questions for you tonight, just, just to give. Uh, just, just a very short thought from God's Word, but, but some questions I want you to consider about spiritual freedom. Number one, I want you to think about this. Have you been born free? As Paul talked about. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 11, or verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Have you been born free tonight? There's a freedom that takes place the moment we trust Christ as our Lord and Savior. When we are born into the family of God, we experience a spiritual freedom. We're no longer entangled in the yoke of bondage. We sing a little song around here. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by his wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. That song talks about freedom. I'm free, free, free. Three times. And that reminds me that when you're a Christian, you've been set free from the penalty of sin. We are being set free from the practice of sin. And one day we will be set free from the very presence of sin. That penalty of sin is justification. When we're born into God's family, we, we are declared righteous before a holy God. He no longer looks at us as guilty, hell-deserving sinners, but God looks at us through the merit of His dear Son, and He looks at us through the purchased price of Christ's blood that's been imputed to our sins. And when the Lord, when God looks at us, He sees that our penalty has been paid for those who know Christ as Savior. That's justification. And then he sets us free from the practice of sin. And how many of you tonight, don't raise your hand, but think about something in your life that God has delivered you from since you've been a Christian. Could be some sinful habit. Some be, could be some practice that you've had before your conversion. And when you got saved, the Spirit of God dealt with you about that thing. And as you surrendered to the Lord and to His Word and obedience... God began to purge your life of that, that thing. And now you look back and say, you know, I can't believe I used to do that. <laughs> I can't believe I used to think that way. I can't believe I used to talk that way. I can't believe that the old me. And, and look, what, look at the grace of God in our lives today. He sets us free from the practice of sin. That's sanctification, by the way. It's a Bible word, sanctification. Does it, sanctification is progressive. Uh, you're never going to get to the place to where you're completely, where sin is eradicated. There's no such thing as the eradication of sin, meaning that you can eventually progress to a point to where you no longer sin anymore. You know, there are people that teach that. There are people that teach you can, you can keep on progressing in your Christian life until you reach a plateau to where you no longer have any problem with sin. Well, that's not a scriptural thing. Uh, that's a whole other sermon, but the Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's sanctification. I'm being set free as I yield to the Spirit of God and to His Word. He sets me free day by day. Justification, that's the penalty of sin. Sanctification, the practice of sin. Glorification is the very presence of sin. One day we're going to be in our glorified body. Isn't that something? And uh, 
with many of us that couldn't come too soon. <laughs> I'm looking forward to a glorified body one day. This one I got is falling apart. But one day I'm going to be glorified. My salvation will be complete. I'll no longer deal with the presence of sin any longer. No sin, no sorrow, no suffering, and no penalty of sin. Uh, no, no condemnation of sin. All of those things. Uh, and so all those things happen uh, and are happening and will happen when we are born into the family of God. Are you born free? As many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that's the freedom that's ours when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior. Now, here's the second question. Number one, have you been born free? Number two, have you been set free? Have you been set free? The Bible says in John 8, 32, uh, look at that verse real quickly, John 8, 32. And while you're there... I want to have you look in John 11 in just a moment. But look in John 8 in verse 32. The Bible says, John 8, 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. <clears throat> and you know, think about Lazarus in John 11 when he came out of that grave. Was he alive? Yes or no? When Jesus spoke, Lazarus, come forth, did Lazarus live, yes or no? Yes, he did. The Bible says he came out of that tomb. But he, he came out in a certain way. Notice the Bible says when he came out of that tomb, the Bible says they took away the stone. Jesus said in verse 43, Lazarus, come forth. The dead came forth. But notice, he was alive, but he was bound. He came forth, but he was bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. Now his first words were, Come forth. Lazarus lived. His next words were, Loose him. Lazarus was loosed. The point I'm making is this. There have been many people that have been born free. They're born into the family of God, but they haven't yet been set free. They're still bound with the grave clothes of sin. They haven't been set free from sinful practices and, and things. Uh, there are many that are born free that are not set free. Uh, what sets us free? What sets us free from the weights and the sins that, do, that does so easily beset us. The Bible says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed thereunto the word of God. If we hide the word of God in our heart, we shall not what? Sin against who? God. Dear friend, the thing that sets us free is the word of God. Ye shall know the truth... And the truth shall set you free, the scripture says. This morning I'm glad that I've been born free into God's family. But I also am glad that God sets me free through the ministry of his word. The ministry of the word of God. And I'm being set free. God delivers us by his word. The Bible says he sent his word and healed them. And deliver them from their destruction. Isn't that good to know that God's word can set us free? Listen, it doesn't make any difference what your sinful habit is, what your temptation is, what your vice is, what your problem is, what your bitterness is. It could be anger, clamor, malice, evil speaking. There's a whole list of things in the Bible that could be something in your thought life. It makes no difference what it is. The Word of God can set you free. Do you believe that tonight? Say amen. God's Word can set us free. And we need His Word to overcome temptation. It's interesting, when Jesus was tempted, how did He overcome temptation? How did He overcome? Well, when Satan came and tempted Jesus, he said, after Christ was hungered and fasted over 40 days, Satan suggested, 
why don't you turn these stones into bread? Satisfy your physical appetite. Jesus said, as it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He came a second time and tempted him uh, with, uh, to take his own life, and the angels would gird him up. And Jesus said again, as it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Every time Satan came against the Lord, Jesus quoted from the Old Testament, from the book of Deuteronomy, as a matter of fact. Every verse Christ quoted to Satan came from the book of Deuteronomy. And Jesus was quoting, as it is written, here's what the Bible says, Jesus was telling Satan. And he overcame him by the word of God. And that gives us a great example how you and I can be set free from the very temptations that Satan will bring against us. Years ago in Africa, there was a, a man that was on a safari, and he was, had a guide, and they were going through the jungles, and, and they came deep in the jungle, and the, the guide, they were looking up in the trees, and <clears throat> the guy had a rifle, and the guide stopped and said, just, I want you to look. And they began to, just to pause and look up, and, and they heard a noise, a, a nest in the top of that tree, and a bird was frantically just chirping and, and making noise. And, and the safari guide said, I want you to look at that snake as it slithers up the tree. And the man watched as the snake got closer and closer to that nest, and no doubt there were little birds in there, and that snake had 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 his sights set on that easy meal. And that mother bird did something strange. She flew away, left the nest unguarded. And the hunter said to the guide, I I've never seen that. And the guide said, well, just wait, just wait. And as that snake got closer, that mother bird came back with a twig in her little beak with leaves and berries, and she dropped it over into that nest on, with her little, little, little birds there. And when that snake got close to that nest and coiled back to strike, when it saw the berries and saw the leaves, it retreated away and slithered slid away. And the hunter thought, I've never seen that. I've ne Why didn't he eat the birds, eat the little birds? The, far, the guide said, that, that bush, that limb with those leaves and those berries are highly poisonous. And snakes can't have anything to do with it. It repels them. Uh, it's, like crypt, it's like kryptonite to Superman, to a snake, those, those leaves. And that bird knew that. And that bird went and plucked a leaf and dropped it in that nest and that serpent retreated. As I thought about that story, that's exactly how you and I can be set free. When Satan slithers our way and seeks to destroy our life with his temptations, you and I need to run to the Word of God and pluck out and it is written and encourage our heart in the Lord and resist the devil with the word of God. And the Bible says he will flee from you. Are you born free? Have you been set free? I'm hurrying. I only got two more left. Here's my third one. Are you ready? Number three. <coughs> Are you still free? Are you still free? So, Pastor, what do you mean by that? Well, Galatians, the verse I read a moment ago, says, Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The Bible says in the book of Philippians, think about this a moment. Paul is talking about how to be a, I'm sorry, the book of 1 Timothy. Paul's talking about how to be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Remember those verses? And he says that a good soldier endures hardness, and he warreth, no man that warreth entangleth himself again with the affairs of this life. 
I'm saying there are some that have been born free. They're in the family of God, and God has set them, through, set them free. But they find themselves in a place to where they become in bondage again to the yoke of sin. They become entangled by the world. The cares of this world. The Bible tells us about the parable of the sower. That the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. I'm saying tonight there are people that get tied up again in the same things that God delivered them from. Are you still free tonight? Are you still free? We don't have to be servants of sin. We can yield ourselves. The Bible says, neither yield yourself as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves as unto God, as those that are alive from the dead, and uh, your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Romans chapter 6 and verse 13. We don't have to be back in bondage again, but we can stay free. <laughs> Amen. Are you still free tonight? So many people get put back in spiritual prisons again. And Satan wants to put us back in bondage. May the Lord help us to see that tonight. And then lastly, my last question is this. What's the first question? Are you born free? Number two, have you been set free? Number three, are you still free? And my last question is this. Are you helping others to be free? Are you helping others? Here's what Paul said, and I'll close with this verse. Luke 4, 18. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. By the way, I have a preacher friend of mine. Every time, Brother Josh, before he preaches a sermon, no matter what service it is, no matter what he's preaching on, he flips over to this verse. This is his verse. He reads this verse before he preaches any sermon. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Well, that's the ministry of, of the preaching of God's word. And our, all of us should be involved in helping others, setting others free, uh, to set at liberty them that are bruised. We who have freedom should help others who need freedom. Amen? We who have freedom should help others who need freedom. And the gospel message is the weapon of our warfare. We shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel. It is mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's what the gospel does. We who have been born free, we who have been set free, should be giving the message of freedom to all who are not free. And may that spiritual freedom at its best, at its finest. Amen. May God help us tonight. Not just to rejoice in the freedom of our nation and the freedom of our great country, but may we rejoice in the spiritual freedoms that we have in Christ. Let's bow and pray together.